The Japanese government has issued a warning to its citizens after North Korea fired a missile over the country. It was launched from the Sunan district of Pyongyang, South Korea's military said. The missile flew over Japan, NHK television said, and the government is warning citizens to avoid touching anything that looks like debris. It comes as North Korea threatened to nuke Japan and reduce the US to ashes and darknesses in response to the latest sanctions imposed by the UN. Japan can never tolerate this repeated provocative action by North Korea, Tokyo's government spokesman told reporters, adding that the country will make an appropriate response. We have strongly protested to the North, telling them the strong anger by the Japanese people and condemn with the strongest words possible. Japanese Foreign Minister Taro Kono said he believes the latest test was of an intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM. South Korea said its military fired a Haiyan Mu-2 ballistic missile into the sea in response to the North's launch. It landed 1,240 miles off the Cape of Arimo in Hokkaido Island at about 6.57 a.m. local time. South Korea's defense ministry said it probably traveled around 2,300 miles and reached a maximum altitude of 478 miles after being launched near Pyongyang's airport. It was the second aggressive test flight over the territory of the close U.S. ally in less than a month, and it followed the sixth and most powerful nuclear test by North Korea to date on September 3. The UN Security Council will meet at 7 p.m. tonight to discuss the latest North Korea missile test at the request of the United States and Japan. The North previously launched a ballistic missile from Sunan on August 29, which flew over Japan's Hokkaido Island and landed in the Pacific. The South Korean and U.S. militaries are analyzing details of the launch, the South's Office of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said the UN sanctions on North Korea needed to be firmly imposed. He added that the international community must send a clear message to North Korea over its provocative actions. He said, we can never tolerate that North Korea trampled on the international community's strong, united resolve toward peace that has been shown in UN resolutions and went ahead again with this outrageous act. If North Korea continues to walk down this path, it has no bright future. We must make North Korea understand this," he added. U.S. President Donald Trump has been briefed about the launch, Chief of Staff John Kelly said. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said these continued provocations only deepen North Korea's diplomatic and economic isolation. He said that all nations should take new measures against the dictatorship. China and Russia must indicate their intolerance for these reckless missile launches by taking direct actions of their own, he added. He also said China supplies North Korea with most of its oil and Russia is the largest employer of North Korean forced labor.
U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis said North Korea's missile launch over Japan put millions of Japanese into duck and cover before it landed in the Pacific Ocean. We have just got done with the calls we always make to coordinate among ourselves. Steady as she goes, Mattis added, branding the move reckless. He said he was not yet ready to discuss the US's response. Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga said there is no evidence yet of any missile fragments landed on Japanese territory. The UN Security Council imposed its eighth round of sanctions on the country over its banned missile and nuclear programs. The North Korean threat was issued via the North State News Agency as U.S. defense officials said the regime has spent the last 48 hours moving mobile missile launchers and preparing fixed sites for launch. Elsewhere analysts from Johns Hopkins University said Kim Jong-un's regime appears to be readying its nuclear test site for more detonations following the explosion of what North Korea claims was a hydrogen bomb on September 3. North Korea has launched dozens of missiles under young leader Kim Jong-un as it accelerates a weapons program designed to give it the ability to target the United States with a powerful, nuclear-tipped missile. This rocket has meaning in that North Korea is pushing towards technological completion of its missiles and that North Korea may be feeling some pressure that they need to show the international community something," said Yang Uk, a senior research fellow at the Korea Defense and Security Forum. Analysts believe that North Korea's latest missile, the Hwasong-14 is capable of ranging most of the mainland US and has already been fired over Japan. In a statement released by news agency KCNA, a spokesman for the regime said, the army and people of the DPRK are unanimously demanding that the Yankees, chief culprit in cooking up the sanctions resolution, be beaten to death as a stick is fit for a rabid dog. There's limit to patience. Now is the time to annihilate the US imperialist aggressors. Let's reduce the U. S mainland into ashes and darkness. Let's vent our spite with mobilization of all retaliation means which have been prepared till now. These are voices of the Korean army and people. Also heard in the DPRK are strong accusations against the Japs who have zealously joined in the US racket for sanctions. The behavior of Japs, sworn enemy of the Korean nation, are enraging us. The wicked Japs should not be pardoned. A telling blow should be dealt to them who have not yet come to senses after the launch of our ICBM over the Japanese archipelago. The four islands of the archipelago should be sunken into the sea by the nuclear bomb of Jutch. Japan is no longer needed to exist near us. Japan's chief cabinet secretary Yoshihide Suga called the statement outrageous, saying it escalates tension in the region and is absolutely unacceptable. Seoul's military carried out a ballistic missile drill of its own yesterday in the East Sea, Korea's name for the Sea of Japan, the Yonhap News Agency reported. In July, Pyongyang fired two intercontinental ballistic missiles that appeared to bring much of the U.S. mainland into range.
it followed that up with an announcement it was planning to send a salvo of rockets towards the U.S. Pacific territory of Guam, home to significant military facilities. U.S. President Donald Trump threatened it with fire and fury, heightening fears of conflict. The United Nations Security Council sanctions imposed on Monday are the strongest so far, banning the North's textile trade and imposing restrictions on shipments of oil products, among a series of other measures. But analysts expect them to do little to dissuade Pyongyang, which says it needs nuclear weapons to defend itself against the threat of invasion by the U.S.